Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kingdom Praise Ministry. Woo! We come to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to give God praise. Amen. On this beautiful hot day, but it's a beautiful day. <laughs> yes. It is so beautiful outside. It's love to see sun. Like this changes my whole spirit when I see the sun shining. So we're grateful to God for allowing us another day in the land of living. Amen. Amen. We're grateful to God. A lot of us are out of town, vacationing and stuff this morning, but we're gonna still carry on. We got the we got the pinch hitters in here today <laughs> to fill in. Today is also our associate minister ministers um Sunday. So um Minister Mike Eccles Jr. is preaching this morning, so we're grateful to God. We got a youth Amen. next week. Taking over services, so we're so grateful. We got our um, pinch hitter uh, Sunday school teacher coming in next week. Don, she's going to do the she's going to do the Sunday school for next week. But anyway, we thank God. Let's have a word of prayer, Father. We are so grateful today as you allow us to go into the homes of people, and even being in this home, oh God, we ask your presence in this place. Please, oh God, fill the hearts of your people this day with the joy of the Lord. Let people come to know you as Savior and Lord, and help us in some way. In some fashion, help us to lift you up in a way that pleases you. We're not trying to please ourselves. We want to please you. Let the word go forth. Let the songs go forth. Let the prayers go forth to glorify your name. That somebody might be healed. Somebody might be delivered. But Father, save somebody this day. But actually, please, oh God, be merciful to our government. Be merciful, God, to the things that are going on in the streets. Be merciful to Baltimore City and the surrounding counties. And Father, please, oh God, be merciful. Let People's hearts be changed by your God, by the word of God. And we thank you for this time, O oh God. So be with us in a special way. We give you praise, honor, and glory because your name is worthy to be praised. In all things, you are so worthy to be praised. Yeah. We glorify you and thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me God say hallelujah. 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 God is good. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, we pray for the day uh, for the Lord. This morning we had our Sunday school lesson, full assurance, devotional reading was Psalm 23. The background reading scripture was Hebrews 6, uh, 9 to 20, done by our deacon uh, Miller from Fellowship Baptist Church. And next week we're going to have the subject matter is Fearless Witness. The devotional reading is from Philippians 3, 1 through 14. The background scripture is Acts 26, 1 to 11. And we'll have our deaconess in training next week, Don Hatcher from KPM. Amen. Bring in that Amen. word. And Bible study, this, this is our last Bible study until September the 12th. This Thursday, the 27th, is our last Bible study until the 12th of September for our summer break. Amen. If you don't need a break, I shall do. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for... Uh, our time of study, and we thank God for our break. Amen. Amen. So, outreach is going to be June the 29th, uh, next Saturday, at Front and Fayette Street. Um, it's in front of St. Vincent de Paul Church. And that actual address is 120 North Front Street. If you're GP and that's GPS and you get down there, 120 North Front. Our setup time is 7.30 a.m., and our service time, we try to get serving by 8 a.m. Amen. So please pray for us as we go forth to uh, reach out to help somebody. Amen. To take the gospel to the streets and help somebody with their physical needs and pray for us that we be able to lift Jesus Christ up in all things. Amen. Next Sunday is our youth and young adult services and our preacher is going to be Minister Vashti Eccles. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, this morning, our scripture lesson. Coming from Philemon. Book of Philemon. Very small book. Only one chapter. Alright, so it's chapter 1, 1 through 7. When you found that portion of scripture, please stand. Take out your, your device, your Bible, whatever you have there. Stand. Those who are here and those who are home. Maybe you should stand up too, don't you, God? <laughs> Get out of the bed. Stand up. Amen. As we, as we read God's word. Philemon. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, NIV version of Scripture. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow co-worker. Also to Apria, our sister, and, and Acrippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. 
grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening our understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. This is the blessed word of God. May be seated in God's presence. So our um, sermon this morning is entitled Slave of Christ. Amen. Slave of Christ. Minister Michael Eccles, so we will first have our sermonic selection by Deaconess and Trainer Don Hatcher, followed by our word for the day, uh, Minister Mike Eccles. Good morning again, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad with that. Um, I come before you once again with another hymn. Amen. I love your hymns. <laughs> um, so I just ask that God would just Use it, allow me to be used um, for his glory. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Barely deeply stained within, sinking to us no but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters left in me now saved am I love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Love. 
small book. If you need help finding it, look for Hebrews. It's right before <laughs> Hebrews. Um, and I'm not sure why God put me here. And then, like, the more I read, the more I realized why he put me here. Because <clears throat> it so happened, I, mean, I was studying for a word. I didn't know what to, not to look for. I was given an assignment to present something to God's people. And I want to seek out um, what is heavy on somebody's heart right now. Um, and that's the thing, we all need love to pull us out of that darkness. And only God's love can do so. Um, and it just so happened, as I'm reading, I, I realized on Juneteenth, well, actually two days after Juneteenth, that this lesson actually tied into Juneteenth. Um, people don't realize how recent slavery really was. Um, the original Juneteenth was June 19, 1865. Um, that's the day we celebrate. That's when two years after slavery was abolished, and those people, those last slaves, were getting the notice that they've been free for two years. But um, that's only 150 years ago, 158 years ago to be exact. Um, put that in perspective. If your grandmother lived to 80 years, that's two grandmothers ago. We were still in slavery. We don't realize how how recent that was, and we're still finding the the social issues <coughs> from our freedom and. The change of minds, the, um, the change of hearts. Uh, there's so many people that still have that notion that one race is superior than the other, and it's no better than we looking down on other races for thinking that way. It's still um, racism either way you look at it. Um, and the, the, the hate has to end. The only way the hate can end is if we give love, and God's love can surpass any kind of hate. Um, and if you go, um, this is an actual lesson about uh, the slave of Onesius. Uh, he ran from Philemon, his slave owner, at this time period. And this time, slavery wasn't as it was in America. Um, slavery was if you owed a balance and you couldn't pay that balance, pay that due, you sold yourself into servitude to pay off your, your debts. Um, it didn't get really... Um, as aggravated, as um, detrimental as the slavery in America that we know. Um, people are hurt by the word slave every day, but we just, we all have to realize we're all slaves to something. Um, 
relate to whatever thing we have most passion for, anything we put before Christ, our idols, that is what we're relate to. If you call yourself, oh, I got to go to work first. I don't have time for that Bible right now. You just made yourself a slave to that job. Um, if you if you're you can be a slave to a supervisor, you can be a slave to your honestly, you can be a slave to your family, you can be a slave to a car, your house, anything that you put ahead of Christ, that's what you're a slave to. That's what you made your idol. If you're a slave to I gotta watch my show, you can be a slave to the TV. <laughs> um, they, there's always different things that we put before Christ. You you you'll set aside a time to watch your favorite show, but are you putting time aside to pick up your Bible? And get caught closer to God. Um, and we gotta realize, yeah, we're all gonna be slaves, but let's be slaves of Christ, because that's the only one that's gonna give us salvation, um, love, joy, peace. Um, all the gifts of the fruit that, uh, fruits of the spirit that we need to make it go on a daily basis. <clears throat> Prometheus was uh, a slave that ran, and they say he sold property from Philemon. Um, the more I studied, they couldn't. Nobody says exactly what he stole. Um, some people assume that he stole something, so he stole riches so he can afford to run away properly. He ran to Rome and thought he could just disappear in the masses of Rome. Um, but honestly, the more I say, the more I think that the property, the property he stole was himself. Because being a slave of Philemon, he's running away, so he's taking property from Philemon. So that's what he stole. He stole himself from Philemon. Um, at this time in Rome, there were 60 million slaves in the, in the um, Roman Empire um, during this time. So you had people of, of all colors and creeds that's in slavery, because it wasn't about race thing back then. Onephius was of uh, African descent, but that's not the reason why he was enslaved. Um, we don't know exactly why he was enslaved in the first place, but chances are he couldn't pay a balance. He put himself in servitude, and instead of paying his full debt, he decided to run instead. <coughs> At this time, the average slave sold for about 500 denarii. Um, denarii, that was the equivalent of one year's salary. Um, one day's, um, a denarii is one day of wage. So 500 days, pretty much, of uh, salary. But if you were a skilled slave, you could, sold, you could have been sold or um, been given forth of 5, 000, up to 5,000 denarii. So your value comes with what you know. And that's what a lot of people in today's society need to learn. You're, you, as you build your, your, your skills, you are growing in value in the eyes of God and amongst one another. <clears throat> um, and if a slave ran, he could be registered under the um, hunters of the town, and he could be punish, punished up to death for running because you're breaking, you're stealing from somebody. Even here um, in the States, when you were a thief and you stole, usually they didn't kill you, they just cut off your hand so you can steal again. Because that's a lesson you never have to learn again. But um, at this time, there's a up to, penalty up to sin, up to murder, up to killing them. It's not considered murder in their mind, it's justice in their minds at this time. But um, if you take a life at the end of the day, I still feel it's murder. And, um, but that's something that Every person has a different mindset. And that's what God's trying to do. He's trying to change our mindsets and all we do. Um, I'm going to start with for Philemon chapter 1, verse 1. The only chapter in the whole book. So you can't get lost. Just find Philemon. Um, Paul, a prisoner of Christ, and Timothy, a brother of brother two, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, so Paul announced himself as a prisoner of Christ to start off this chapter, to start off this, this letter. Um, this is the smallest letter. If you read any of uh, Paul's other letters, he always he usually comes as apostle or um, something of higher ranking. At this point, he's, he's considering himself a prisoner, trying to come upon um, Philemon's um, soft side, because uh, he's trying to identify along with Onesius, um, because... Paul wants to make it known that once you're a child of Christ, we're all on the same ground. There's no person higher than the other. The pastor is the same as any pride in the congregation when it comes to the eyes of Christ. And that's one thing we got to get uh, strong forth in every church nowadays. Um, 
He appreciates, he says welcomes, greetings to all the family. Uh, he comes with peace. He, he's thanking for the um, Father God for the ability to make it there. And reminding Felintus, Felintus, ah, can't speak now, um, that he's constantly praying for him. And that's what we need to be doing for one another at all times. No matter if we agree with him or not, we need to make sure we're keeping one another up in prayer. Um, and I'm going to jump down to verse 6. I pray that your partnership with us and the faith may be effective in the deep meaning and understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. This is what we're supposed to be doing for one another. We should be refreshing one another. When I come into your presence, you should be happy to see me. I, I shouldn't be drugged down, because that's that's the way of the world. The way of the world is all self, um, self-involved, and we don't care about how other people feel. We want to be bringing peace in with everywhere you go, because it's the best to get to God, to really change the atmosphere. When God's there, then when you're there, that means Christ is there, because Christ is inside you. And what can't God change? I didn't have my dad read all of the scripture because I want to go through the whole book. Uh, the book is only 20, um, 22, set, um, 22 verses. Um, Philemon is, they, they think, so at this time, their sense of humor was different from ours. Um, there's, they're very punny. Philemon's name means affectionate, the one who is kind. And Onipidus means useful, profitable, and ben- beneficial. Um, so Philemon, just for his name being affectionate, uh, Paul is constantly saying his name, so to remind him of what his name means. You're supposed to be affectionate, forgiving, and all that's going on. And Paul is trying to, this whole point of his letter, is trying to get Philemon to um, get um, Philemon to receive Onipheus as a brother now, uh, a slave that had ran away, um, uh, somebody that he was considered his property at one point. Now he wants uh, Philemon to accept him as a brother, which is unheard at this time. At this time, the just cause would have him killed, but instead he wants him to receive him and forgive all, all the bounce, all, all the dues that was owed to him. And Onipheus was, at this time, since he ran, he was not profitable, he wasn't beneficial, and we don't know how good of a slave he was, let's be honest. Um, it doesn't speak of his works as a slave, other than he ran, and possibly stole something from Philemon. Um, I had my father read the introduction, but I'm going to get more into the text. Philemon, chapter, um, verse 7. Your, lo- your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. So, yes, Paul is given, you've heard all the the praising Paul has been given. He's he's trying to um, remind Philemon of how good of a person he is. Like let's let's prove how good the person you are in action and in love. I want I could he could have ordered him to free the slave, but he wants Philemon to do it on his own behalf out of love. Um, yes, the the Bible does not say anything about slaves should be abolished, but it speaks of everything about doing out of love. Um, and this is a, a good point where Paul is trying to push on. Philemon, trying to give him the freedom. Give, he actually had Onesimus deliver the letter directly to Philemon, and then back to the person that so-called owned that person. But Philemon, uh, we're, we're praying that Paul's letter is strong, strong enough to give so much remorse that he's really to um, cast aside all penalties. Verse 9, yet I prefer the appeal on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ. So 
So he's trying to say, remind you, I'm at the same feet, I'm at the same level as Onyphius. I'm a prisoner, just as Onyphius was a prisoner, but we're all set free in Christ. That's my brother, so we should all be set free in that same love. Formerly, he was unless, unless useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and me. Because at this point, um, Olivius has become a, a part of Paul's ministry. This is shown once again, African Americans, we have been here from the beginning of the ministry. Um, that's another fighting against this is a white man's religion. No, we've been here from the start. We've been here since the, um, the Old Testament. Um, and that's one thing that we got to get out of our heads. Anybody that says it's white man's religion, like, no, what about the whole book of Philemon? It's about freeing the slave. Um, or uh, you can go back to um, Leviticus, um, Deuteronomy. It's all about freedom, freeing. No man should be uh, held captive against his will. Um, in this point in time, we can all see if you have a job, you are a slave to that job to an extent. Because um, you have to do what they say do. If you don't, you're not going to get you're not going to get paid your wages. At the end of the day, we're all slaves to something. Um, but we might as well be free slaves of Christ at the same time. Show that love as you go to your job. Show that love that God gave you. Um, I'm sending him who is my very heart back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. At this time, Paul is in chains. He's he's literally a prisoner, but he's a prisoner of Christ. He's no, he's he's been locked up because he preaches the word of Christ. You can say <laughs> I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you would have sent a force will be forced on you but would be voluntary so in other words Paul he could as an apostle command that you free the slave but he wants to as God does open up your heart with love he wants to make sure um, he's showing the heart of Christ by sending this letter. Um, normally, you would have to like actually give a slave to the authorities, but simply by keeping him up alive, keeping him with you, it's showing that he's had he's on the side of the human being. Um, and Paul, at this time, is like trying his best, his his holy, his his best best plea to um, um, Philemon to free Onipheus of all wrongdoing. And he doesn't want to be forced on, because let's be honest, anything that's forcing us, we don't like. We're not going to love it at all. Um, but if it's done out of love, it's all great. Nothing comes bad if you done out of love. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even de dear to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So this is once again, putting us on the same level, slave and slave owner, your boss and you are on the same level. You're both um, under Christ. Um, as, long, as soon as you make the Lord Jesus your Lord and Savior, He is your Savior. He is your Lord. He is the only one that's above you. Because He's above all. <coughs> and that's the same kind of love we should show one another. If you know uh, somebody that, um, if you could be that middle ground, if you know there's an issue between two friends, take that penalty on yourself. Say, like, hey, forgive him. Anything that he owes, I, I, I can pay for you. Because we need to level this. Because we're supposed to be living in peace amongst one another. Maybe jumping ahead a little bit, but. Um, 
no longer as a slave, but better than a slave as a dear brother. He is very dear to me and even deeper to you, both as a fellow man, as a brother of the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done any wrong to you or owes you anything, that <clears throat> change it to owe me on you. In other words, Paul is saying, if you feel the need to put him back in captivity, take me instead. And that's the kind of love we should be showing one another. We should be willing to pay the penance for one another. Because that's what Jesus does for us on the cross. He went up there and paid the price that we couldn't afford to pay. <clears throat> he died for us. Because the cost of sin is still death, regardless of what the world tells you. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I'll pay it back. Not to mention... <clears throat> that you owe me your very self. So, Paul is once again going back to if Onipsis owes you, I'll pay his penance, but also, reminder, I'm the one that got you into the um, into a relationship with Christ. So, how much more do you owe me? So, that same level as you forgive, as I forgive you for what you may owe me, you should forgive him for what he owes you. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. And we we got to remember that like, all that we do, we should be doing in the mindset of Christ. We need to make sure that we are um, putting that love in every situation. <clears throat> In every um, every decision, every interaction, confident in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And this is where he's pretty much saying, not only do I expect you to forgive him for his his past, but also do more than that, uh, forgive him from being a, his property, in other words. And one more thing, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer of prayers. So after um, you accept Olympias into your household as a brother, I'm going to come by. I'm going to make sure you set a place for me because I'm coming to visit because I want to see how good y'all are going together. And this is what we got to remember. Um, God gives us these tasks. Listen to that still voice in your head. When it's right, you know it's right. When it goes against your flesh, you know it's right. Um, when it feels like, oh, I know I should do this, but I really, I, I don't want to do it. If you got to listen, look at look in the mirror and say, is that my flesh talking or is that God talking? That's how you determine God's voice in your head. Um, when it's something that was going to please your flesh, uh, we please like your pride. Um, and if it's anything that's for preventing you from forgiving someone, that is all flesh. God's called us to forgive one another as He's forgiven us. And how many times has He forgiven you? How many things? How many sins have you committed? And God has forgiven it all. So just in the same way, should we should be we should be forgiving one another. Um, I, I just want to jump to. Um, Verse 20 of uh, Romans 6, 20. Um, when you were a slave to sin, you were, you were freed from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you were now ashamed of? Those things the result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the results in eternal life. So this is just a reminder that we have been set free from sin. We are called to be righteous now. Um, we're not supposed to walk up with our nose up saying I'm holy, I'm righteous. No, that's not what righteousness means. Righteousness means I'm walking in faith. I'm walking the way Christ told me to walk. Walking humbly. If you're not humble and you're righteous, you miss the whole point. Um, 
Righteous doesn't mean people have a mindset of righteousness being clouded in your mind. You're being self self um, involved. But no, righteousness is the complete opposite. It's about humility. It's um, being willing to forgive everybody for anything they held against you, including that family member, that, that parent, that unresolved anger. You need to give it all to Christ. There's nothing that Christ can't free you from. Everything that you're holding to is just weighing you down. If you're holding to so much stuff, how can you ever uh, catch the the, um, the gifts of God? Because your hands are so much are full of so much anger, so much regret, so much grief. If you let that go, you're you're free to catch the peace, the love, the joy, all the gifts that God wants you to have. Um, I want to remind people that no matter what happens in your life, God can bring you through it. There's, there's nothing that's too big, too small that he doesn't want to hear about. Everything, 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 everything on your job, going through traffic, making it to the job, you stub your toe, like, you name it, God wants to hear it from you. He wants communication, constant communication with us. And people only fall short because we don't communicate with him on a regular basis. Um, I love this this um, lesson in the, in the, in the Bible um, because it's showing us not only um, this is the one of the only books that Paul writes that doesn't actually mention Christ directly or the, the sacrifice of Christ, but he's actually living it out. He's saying that I'm going to take that penalty. Anything that you hold against him, put it on me. If uh, if you want to put him back in slavery, if you want him to pay a certain amount of money, whatever it is, put it on my charge. And that's what Christ did for us. And that's what we should be doing for one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, there's I couldn't find any actual documents, but tradition says that Philemon went on to be the Baptist of the um, the Baptist of Colossae, while Olympias went on to be the Baptist of Ephesus. Um, but both men were martyred um, during the reign of uh, Caesar Nero. Um, but once again, this puts us on the same level. I know it's hard to hear being martyred, but that's what happened to all of us all the, the foundation of, Christ, of this kingdom. But we're still alive today to, put, to push forth that story, put forth the, the love of Christ. Because um, their story didn't end like that, but they did end on the same level. They both martyred. Once again, saying that no matter what, when you're free from Christ, we're all the same. We're all brothers and sisters, and there's nobody greater or smaller than the next. Like the, the custodian is just the same as the pastor. But if you're a, um, a deacon, a trustee, or a pew member, no matter what, we're all on the same level. We need to make sure that we're praying for one another, loving one another, and helping one another get through any situations going on. That's the only way we can make it through anything. And that's the grace that God gives us. Um, I know my dad's spoken of before, but grace is a great acronym for it is God's riches at Christ's expense. Because God, Christ paid that price. He gave he gave us grace. We're only righteous by Christ. And our own, we, we, all we are owed is death. Because that's the cost of sin. And we're all sin. Um, you can walk outside, see the sign, and like how much, how many things do you turn on on a regular basis? There's, it's just made to bring forth lust. Um, if it's not sexual lust, it's lust of products. Oh, I love that car. I need that car. That's lust for that, that, that thing. That I love those houses. Oh, if I just had nice windows like that. Oh, there's double doors. I love to have double doors in the front of my house. Oh, I love to have a nice deck like that. But that's just saying what you have isn't enough. With Christ, you got to realize he gives us the ability to be satisfied with what we have. And only in Christ we can do that. Because if you live in the way of the world, the world always wants, wants, wants. But God says, have peace. Be still. I have, I, I believe you still waters. He is my shepherd. I, I, I shall not want. I shall not um, want to grab something else. I, I shall not be living in envy. I shall not be trying to reach out and grab and everything else. Um, I'm satisfied to learn that. And that's what God wants us. He wants us to be satisfied. Um, the happiest man isn't the one that has the most. As you can tell by Hollywood, they're all seeking more. They always want more. The happiest man is the one that requires the least. And talk to God about that. Help me to require less, Lord. Because peace comes in less. The more you need, the more more problems. 
more money, more problems, as kids say. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's true to it. Um, I remember when I was at my, uh, my highest point in my mind, like financial wise, that's when I had the most depression. Um, I was making money on top of money, but I was depressed in my heart. What's the point of having all that money if I don't even want to be here anymore? So it wasn't until I never, no longer needed that that money, that green to fill self-esteem that I actually found peace in my life. And that's what God wants for us all. Just that dollar will never be satisfied because you always want more money. When, when you say you have enough money, it's impossible to say that. But with Christ, you have it all. And um, I want to remind people, um, I know I saw this on a, a, a reel, um, but it's, it's stayed true to me. Um, people nowadays don't know how to pray. Um, they fall short in prayer in their prayer life, and that's why they fall short in life, because they're not praying enough. God wants to hear, us, hear from us all the time. The best way to think about prayer that I found um, is the acronym TACOS. I know it sounds stupid, but I love tacos, so I am hoping you love tacos too. Uh, T is giving thanksgiving. Thank God for all that he's done, all he's doing, all he's going to do. A, it comes from admiration. Thank God for who he is. He's created the heavens and the earth. There's nothing that uh, actually presides on this earth that he can't make or destroy. But he, he, he's given us all these gifts, the gifts of the world. He's made us the tillers of this earth. Unfortunately, we have so many people misusing the earth. But that was our original assignment. We we're all called to be gardeners. But unfortunately, we're, we're doing the opposite a lot of times. We're chasing money over, over the actual land. C, confession. You gotta make sure your confession for your sins. How you can be forgiven for a sin you never actually brought to God. If it's weighing down your heart, that's something you have to give to him. Like, you know you did wrong, give it to him. Um, and the best thing to do is turn from it. Make sure you're not doing it over again. Because that's when it becomes a practice. And, oh, is when you, you pray for others. Who's not called here just to pray for ourselves? Prayer's not me, but just giving a list of things that I want. It's the things that we know we, we should supposed to be bringing one another up in prayer. Um, I know when I was at my weakest point, I heard there was entire prayer lines. Um, people all over social media praying for me to get back on my feet. And thank God for answers prayers, because that's why I know I am. I'm an answer prayer. Um, and then, at the very least, pray for self. That's what you want to put last. Put your, um, make sure you remember yourself. But pray, pray for anything that's weighing on you. Anything that your elements going against your back. Right now, I'm praying for a, a strong of my back to get back to normal. Um, um, praying for my dad's knees. His back is working. Him too. Um, pray for ability to lose weight. Get back into shape. Um, and pray for the things that, anything that um, at your job, any kind of um, relationships that you want mended together, any kind of parts, any kind of heart that you feel like is broken, that anything that you feel that's not correct, um, any kind of relationships that you, you personally felt had destroyed, pray for self to be healed from that. Because um, there's nothing that God can't handle. Nothing's too big for God. If you think that God can handle it, you have the wrong idea of God. Um, he's, once again, he's the creator of the heavens and earth, so what on this earth can't be solved, can't be fixed. Um, and I just want to end with prayer. Lord, thank you for, once again, allowing us to have this, this time together. We give thanksgiving for what you've given to us on a regular basis, all that you've done, all that you're going to do, um, what you're doing now in this instant. My simple ability to talk it's, uh, it's a ministry right there. My parents were once told that you'd never be understanding a word that he says, but I actually spoke for you. I'm speaking for you on a regular basis now, Lord. I can't say thank you enough. Lord, thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. Thank you for the creation of this earth so we can have a home. Thank you for the ability to have a house to live in. Thank you for the ability to have a, a, a car to drive. Thank you for a job to help support those those things that we have, that we use on a regular basis, Lord. I can't say thank you enough. And I want to confess, Lord, forgive me from every sin, acknowledge, and unacknowledge. 
help other people to realize that they can give their sin to you and they don't have to be weighed down by their sin. You died on that cross for us directly. There's nothing that your blood can't blot out. You covered it all, Lord. Lord, thank, thank you for the, all the gifts of the Spirit. Thank you for your peace, your love, your joy, long-suffering, the gifts of the Spirit, the, the, the different individual gifts that we all have. Help us to develop those gifts, Lord, and bring more glory to your name. But we, we don't know where our gifts are, but help get us moving so we can activate those gifts. If we acknowledge it or unacknowledge it, let us be used by you, Lord. Lord, touch me directly. I can't say all the things you brought me through, but I know you're not, not going to stop now. You brought me through so much. I, I, I was in a wheelchair. I went from a wheelchair to a walker, a walker to a rollator. Now I'm walking on my own, Lord. I was in depression, a dark depression. Now all I see is light. And I want to share that with everybody I come in contact with, Lord. Lord, I can't say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you enough, Lord. Please help everybody who sent my voice to get closer to you and your grace and your peace, your love. Allow me to share that peace and love with everybody they come in contact with, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. That's the end of my Thank God today. Yeah. We are no longer slaves. But Jesus Christ has set us free. Amen. 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 He paid the price we could not pay. So we thank God for the message and messenger today. We pray, yeah. thank God for each one of you to join us in person, also by way of social media. We thank God today. I'm trying to get the taco right. Um, <laughs> Thanksgiving. Who was it? Admiration. Admiration, confession, and others. And so y'all, and, and what, and self, tacos. So eat your tacos this week. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Go ahead and your prayer. Go to the app and then remember to get the tacos in every day. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. All right. Thank God today for the message, reminding us of the graciousness of God, reminding us of uh, compassion, reminding us how to treat people, remind us of our past. We've come from somewhere. Y'all know we, we're here today on the backs of blood, sweat, yes. and tears. Our forefathers, what you said, what, 150 years ago? 180. 180 years ago, we're still enslaved. 158. 158. 158. Yeah. Still enslaved. Just a couple generations ago, yeah. uh, I, I remember um, when I was um, very young, we had, I had some friends of mine and the older, they had an aunt who uh, was a school teacher, but she was going to do she said, I'm on my way to go do a sit-in. And that's in my, that's in my, you know, when I was a kid. And I didn't understand what she was talking about, a sit-in. I was too young to even know. Our parents kind of sheltered us as much as they could. But that's in my lifetime, she was going to do a sit-in. Mm-hmm. So that's not that far away. Mm-hmm. Well, some of y'all said, that's a long time ago. You a child, but, you know. <laughs> it was maybe, maybe 50 years ago. Yeah. For me to remember, but I never knew what she was doing until I got older and I realized that she was actually um, doing stuff that we benefit from today. Mm-hmm. I remember the, some of the stores to have markings on the doors um, for whites only. Mm-hmm. I remember going down south and I thought my parents were, uh, we, we used to love to go down south because uh, my mother would always pack. We would go in a, a bunch, we're going to seven union, go four or five cars, get together fill our coolers up and have this food, this fried chicken and potato mm-hmm. salad and all this stuff on the way. We would then go to these park benches. We thought we were just having fun. We didn't know they couldn't go to certain restaurants mm-hmm. in my lifetime. So we've come a long way. Amen. So we mm-hmm. thank God mm-hmm. for what he's doing. We say a long way to go, yeah. but keep the hope alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I still yes. have a dream. Amen. Yes. The dream moves on. Amen. That one day you would not be judged by the color of your skin, but what? By the content yeah, of your character, amen. Yeah. To realize that um, all men are created equal in God's eyesight. We've got to hold our country accountable to realize that this is what you say you stand for. Now show us this is what you stand for. So we thank God today for our Juneteenth celebration. We thank God for the message and messenger. We thank God for you being with us one more time for another Sunday morning. 
May God's richest blessings be upon your life. Remember uh, this Thursday Bible study, our last Bible study for this, this until September. Remember our outreach this Saturday. Come on, be a part of us. We can always use some helping hands. The more hands, the better. Amen. Amen. Y'all know we need a lot of helping hands, and they're trying to make sure things are done right. So come on by, bring donations, drop off donations. Fine. We have some people stop by and drop things off. So I can't stay by and drop some stuff off. That's fine. So we thank God. But keep us in your prayers. We seek to serve our master uh, and somehow glorify him in all things we do. God bless you. Kingdom Praise Ministries signing out.